Today's video starts with a question. What web browser primarily do you use on your Mac? Chrome, Firefox, or Safari? As in today's video, we will unlock Safari's impactful customizations and hidden features that will make your user experience faster, smarter, and safer. So if you're ready, let's start with step number one. Create multiple profiles and separate your work, business, and personal life. Right inside Safari, click on Safari at the left side top corner. Get to Settings. In the next window, navigate to Profiles. Start using Profiles. Give it a name. Personal. Choose a symbol. In fact, you can choose a color from here. And click on Create Profile. To create another profile, click on this plus symbol here. From the same settings window, you can also customize how you wish to start the new window. From here, you can choose and how you wish to open the new tab. Close settings window, close everything. Now, when you will open Safari, you'll have options to choose between your profiles. At the top in toolbar, you will notice that personal button that is to switch your profile. Now let's customize these profiles smartly. Mostly as default, this is how you're going to see the startup page in your Safari. At the left side top corner, you have this tiny button to access sidebar. From here, you can access all the tabs or bookmarks. Make a right click anywhere on the startup page and you will have the list of options available to enable and disable. You can click on these features one by one to disable them or enable them. To make your Safari startup page clutter free, this is Personally, I like to see my Safari page. Same way you can make a right click and enable whatever you want to do and put them back. You can also click on the edit button at the right side bottom corner to customize these options. And also from here, you can choose these backgrounds. Moreover, you can also add an image of your choice and upload just like that. Now make a right click at the very top on the toolbar and click on customize toolbar. This is the empty space on right and this is the empty space on left where we can deploy some of these items. So let's set an example. Print. I will deploy it here on right. I will also deploy Zoom. In fact, I will also deploy iCloud tabs on left. Once you're done adding the items, you can click on done here. This is how you can customize Safari's toolbar as per your preference. And later in this video, I will also show you the benefits of these customizations in the toolbar that we did right now. Now let's create tab groups. Under each profile, you can create a specific set of groups. For example, let's open multiple websites here first of all. So here right now I have three tabs open. Now let's suppose I wish to add all these three tabs under one group. Now make a right click on each tab and access this option, move to tab group. Let's create a new tab group here. Give it a name, business. To get back to the other website tabs, click on this option, crazy errors. You may have a different name for your profile. Click on it and you will be taken back to the other tabs. Make a right click again and uh, move to tab group click on business that's what we have created here now all these three websites are added under one tab group which is business on each of these tabs you can make a right click and click on pin tab now close safari next time you need to access all these tabs in a group click on sidebar and here is our tab group business as soon as i click on this all these three pages are loaded in Safari right there. So far in the video, we already created multiple profiles, customized the startup page, and created multiple tab groups. But this becomes even more fun when you enable iCloud Sync. Click on Apple icon at the left side top corner, get to system settings, scroll on left and look for an option iCloud. Over here, you see this option, see all, click on it. In the next window, scroll it and look for this option, Safari, and ensure it is enabled. This is going to allow Safari to sync bookmarks and other settings with iCloud. 
Now all the settings you have so far applied, apart from the toolbar customization, they will be all reflecting on your other devices too at the same time. With every new update or device launch, Apple always focuses on one factor, that is privacy. Safari has a built-in anti-tracker. Click on Safari at the left side top corner, get to settings. In the next window, you need to click on privacy. This should be already enabled, prevent cross-site tracking. Also, you need to enable hide IP address from trackers and websites. Together, they block cookies and also mask your identity. If you're paying for iCloud Plus subscription, you get private relay. Under system settings window, again, scroll to iCloud on left. On right, click on this option here, private relay, and make sure you enable this. Now this will hide your IP address and browsing activities in Safari. In Safari, you can conveniently access and control the site permissions. During the toolbar customizations, I already told you, I'm going to explain this later. We added the site setting button already. Click on it and from here, you can customize the actions and the permissions on each website, whatever you like. By the way, if you want to enable the maximum level of protection on your Mac without buying or paying for a third party tool, then you should watch our this video. 7 Mac security settings that Apple left off by default. You can put reader mode on autopilot on a specific website. And over here, let's take example of AOL. I will click on this again website setting button and check this box here, use reader when available. And click on any one of these articles. Let's take this example. And as soon as the reader mode is available on any specific article or link that will be enabled automatically like this. So all the clutter from this website, from this specific link is all gone. And you have this pretty much like a clean PDF version. In fact, you can copy everything from here without any clutter and paste it in a new doc, just like that. In the toolbar customization, we also added this button for zoom in, zoom out that can be helpful for a lot of users. Also, we added this print button, if you recall it. So if you wish to print this article, you can click on this print button and get a clean print of this web page. Did you know you can create a dedicated shortcut for a specific website in Safari? Open up the website and then click on file at the left side top corner, navigate to add to doc. You can rename it to whatever you want and then click on add. Now notice in the dock, you got this dedicated icon for YouTube. If you click on it, this is going to bring up that page directly. If Safari starts acting sluggish, here's what you do. Click on Safari and left side top corner, get to settings. In the next window, click on privacy. Click on manage website data. In this window, you're going to see the list of websites here. You can either remove them one by one or click on this button remove. Remove now, done. So in the same window, you can click on this tab extensions and check in this window if you see any bogus extension installed, check them one by one and remove them. In the same Safari settings window, click on advanced and at the bottom, you will see this option show features for web developers. Click on it. In the menu bar, you're going to see develop. The first thing you can click on empty cache for all profiles. With one click, you can clean all cache. From same develop menu, you can also get to this option enter responsive design mode. If you did not know about it, let me tell you. From here, you can choose the way you wish to see any specific website. If you want to see how this website is going to look on the iPhone size display, then you can choose this option and this is how you're going to see this website on your iPhone. Same way you can also test it on the iPad on 13 inch iPad. So how many of these did you already know? Type me in the comment section. And if any one of these uh, settings or customizations surprised you, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe Crazy Editors for future tech tips, tricks, and solutions. And by the way, if you're a MacBook user, and if you want to know what happens when you close the lid, you should go ahead and watch out this video. Anyways, until next time, you take care of yourself, and I will see you in the next video.